Hello, everyone. My name is Josh Orszewski. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm the Student Organizations Coordinator for Student Leadership and Involvement. And today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about recognized student organization officer transitions. So when you're going through officer transitions, the outgoing officers are transitioning information to the new incoming officers. There are some questions you're gonna to wanna to ask, right? So what are the most important things that our new officers need to know about our club? Um, ways that we run meetings, so when do we meet? Uh, where do we meet? What kinds of things do we talk about in our meetings? What kind of events do we host, right? It's important that they know these things. What accounts, profiles do they need access to? So this is uh, Campus Connect, any social media accounts, bank accounts, things like that, things where they'll need to actually get in there and be able to post about events, access the, the, the bank account to make purchases on behalf of the club, uh, things like that. What contacts do they need to have in case of any questions? This could be contacts with our office, student leadership and involvement, you know, maybe you reserve space in the union quite often. So where do they go to reserve space in the union? Who do you use the contact? If you have an advisor, who's the advisor? What's their contact information? What steps do they need to take to make sure that your organization maintains its recognition status with the university, right? So annually, student organizations do need to re-register with our office, Student Leadership and Involvement, so it's important that they know what their process looks like so they can keep an eye out for mandatory trainings uh, and the re-registration uh, re process so that they can make sure the org maintains its recognition status and all the cool benefits that come along with being a recognized student organization. Right, so you wanna think of new officer orientation, new officer transition as sort of a relay race, right? So the outgoing officers are handing the baton to the new officers, right? So you're gonna to wanna to think about what does that process look like? How are we going to successfully hand this organization off to the new leadership, right? So think about allow sufficient time between transitions. We recommend at least a month. That can change based on your organization, right? So just know that once elections happen or if new officers are appointed or some other transition method, the outgoing officers do still need to do some work to make sure that the incoming leaders have the tools, the knowledge, the skills that they need uh, to be successful, right? So you might work in a few weeks of transition period so that you can make sure that the new folks have everything that they need to, to be successful leaders, All right? You can, you can consider orienting new officers as a group with outgoing officers. You could schedule a meeting uh, to talk about important duties, important information to pass along, things like that. You could consider creating a transition document with important information for each officer, right? So the president has a specific president transition document. The treasurer has a specific treasurer transition document, so on and so forth, with important information about that specific role. And most importantly, share personal insight, experience, and advice with incoming, uh, incoming officers, right? So what, what worked well this year? What worked not so well? What, what are some things that you might suggest to change? You know, you could say something like, hey, we tried this new event and it didn't work out so well. And here's what we learned. Or, hey, we tried running meetings this new way and people really liked it. So maybe we consider continuing to run meetings this way and so on and so forth. Right. Some things to think about, a checklist, if you will, right? It's important to update any changes to leadership on your organization's Campus Connect profile. This is going to help uh, potential members, prospective members know who to contact if they're interested, right? So if the outgoing officers are still listed uh, on the club's page and folks are interested in learning more, they might contact the wrong folks. So you wanna make sure that you have the current leadership on the Campus Connect profile and that way they'll also be able to post new events, newsletters, create forms, and, and manage the club's profile. You're going to want to make sure that the new officers complete the bystander intervention training. So every year, 
Each recognized student organization has to have a minimum of three officers complete this training. It's online, it's asynchronous. Uh, it includes watching about a 40 minute video and then a short quiz afterwards. So you're gonna wanna make sure that the new officers complete this training. Uh, like, like I mentioned before, transitioning bank accounts, other social media, other platforms, if applicable. Share contact information for all new club officers. Make sure that they can contact each other, contact the advisor, contact our office, other campus partners that you might work with, and give access to online platforms, Campus Connect, social media, if you're using Discord, other sort of group chat, things like that, just make sure that they have access to those things. Organizational documents, make sure that the new officers have access to the constitution and bylaws. These documents should be reviewed at least once a year. That's an opportunity for incoming leaders to review them and make necessary changes. Constitutions are living, breathing documents, and it's important that those continue to evolve as the club evolves. So make sure that they have access to that document. It also provides a good roadmap for how they should be running their positions, right? That, that should be outlined in the Constitution. Financial records, bank account information, membership records, current roster, uh, so on Campus Connect, make sure that they have access to the roster. If you're using a group chat, that they have access to that. Organization forms and applications. So if you have an application process to, to join your organization, make sure that new, new leaders, new officers have access to those. And previous meeting minutes helps them know what happened in the past. Uh, also, how to format any new uh, meeting minutes. Organization processes, right? As I mentioned before, the RSO annual re-registration process. You want to make sure that your org maintains its recognition status. So make sure that new leaders understand what that process looks like. Reserving space on campus. So if you typically are reserving space in the union or elsewhere on campus, make sure that new officers understand that process. Managing the organization's Campus Connect profile, including hosting events. So our office provides lots of trainings on how to navigate and best utilize Campus Connect. But as you have been managing your profile and you know kind of what's, what's working, uh, what might need improvements, you know, we typically do this on our Campus Connect profile. It's important that, that new officers know that. Organization resources, right? So the organization resource group is a group uh, within the student leadership and involvement. Uh, it's myself, we have a graduate, uh, a graduate student and some undergrad students who help us uh, support student orgs, right? So uh, make sure that they know that they can reach out to the organization resource group with questions. Uh, we provide resources to help orgs navigate the re-registration process and so on and so forth. ASUU funding information for RSOs, so make sure that they know that they can contact the Associated Students at the University of Utah for different funding opportunities. Campus Connect Guidebook is a great resource on how to navigate and best utilize Campus Connect, so make sure that they have a copy of that handy. And that's about it. So this list is not exhaustive. You may have more important information, more important processes to work into your specific um, officer transition plan. Each organization works a little bit differently. There may be things that I talked about that aren't applicable to your organization. That's okay. So it's important to just customize a plan that works for you. But most importantly, it's just making sure that incoming officers have the tools, the knowledge, uh, the resources that they need to be successful. And of course, our office, Student Leadership and Involvement, is always happy to help. So feel free to reach out. You can visit our website. We have an email there, studentorgs at utah.edu. We're here in the Union on the second floor, Suite 234. Uh, you can stop by any time or give us a call. Let us know how we can help. And uh, thanks for watching.